Welcome, Internet, to the Pixel Play Podcast, your weekly gaming podcast for gamers by gamers. This week, we're going to be putting our Jeff Keighley hats on and putting our guesses at what is going to be the nominations for the Game Awards 2023. I am one of your co-hosts, Kalen, a.k.a. Catastrophe, joined as always by my co-host, Adam, at CS Radical, and Chris, at Gin and Chris. With that being said, if you like what you hear, you want to hear more, we post this every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, wherever you get your podcasts, or you can see our lovely faces as we do this by finding us on YouTube or on Spotify to watch the video podcast. We also host a second video on Fridays on YouTube called SideQuest. This week, we talk about Zelda. With that being said, guys, everything out of the way, let's jump into it. How have you guys been this week? What have you guys been playing? Adam, you go first. I finished I LA no Noir. Been it was better than I remember, probably because I'm a more mature adult and understood most of the themes in that game compared to when I was like in my early 20s and real and was a dumb fuck. Gameplay, again, can can take or miss it. I honestly ended up just fast traveling a bunch because I'm like, this world is way too big. This game told me, yeah. Open worlds were way too big a long time before I was already complaining about them. There is oh, yeah. way too much. Now, it, it does feel like a real city because you're going through many different blocks, but that's boring as shit. I'd like a much smaller map, thank you. Sorry, guys. But, I mean, I, I enjoyed the game. I still think for what it was, I, assuming, if I remember correctly, it was like a 2011 release or something like something around that. I think it's aged well for that time, but I think you could make a game like this again without some serious budget constraints because uh i've seen I, I also researched stories on how uh team bondi basically went under and how everything got completely screwed up yeah they weren't great for sticking with the budget and also their boss was a real piece of shit so mm. yeah mm. that was great but it was a fun game like if i honestly put a rating to it now i'd probably put it a solid four and a half around that point i think it's still a great game tells a fantastic story and it's a great time piece in an in a age where most games in the 40s are just World War II games, and that's it. So I thought it was really nice to have that perspective. But I mean, like, there's a lot wrong with it going forward, but it was still pretty fun while I had it. I just want to interject, but you said it's a four and a half. Is that on the Pixel Play podcast scale? You got her. Okay, just making sure, because four and a half could be very different depending on what scale we're using. No, yeah, uh, it's Modern like Warfare 10, 3, apparently, horrible. according to IGN. Actually, I think it's a four. <laughs> I don't even think it was a four and a half. Yeah, I, oh. like, I tried that game, and I just... I find like they they put way too much investment into the th- into the facial recognition and it just looks like you're you're looking at a crumpled sock and I'm like this is stupid so I mean at the and, time and the I thought it was were really like... cool now I look back and I'd be like this looks kind of silly now in retrospect but I also have to keep in mind this is 12 years old now and that actually looks pretty decent for the time but it's not even it's not even just like the facial expressions it's also like the prompts because it'd be like hey I think this person's like lying and you're like doubt and they'd be like why are you lying bitch and it's like Whoa, I was just like going like, I just don't believe you. I'm not to be fair. You that is most choose your own dialogue options anyway, because you're like, I'm going to be nice with this person. And you yell at them anyway. Or you're like, look, I need to give them a stern talking to and you just shoot them in the head. That's usually how it works. <laughs> Wait, is that not how you do a stern talking? Look, I played oh, I enough Mass to Effect to know that there's only two options, saint or fucking shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you'll be happy to know I have now started Cyberpunk, so there you go. Well done. What? Welcome to the civilized world. I've maybe only oh, put two hours it. into it so far. I've ba- I've basically done nothing yet. I just finished the mission where you uh you learn everything that you're going on with Dexter to Sean, and I've spoken to uh what's her name um oh my god the, not the not Judy the other woman with her Pan Am no no it's like right at the start of the game I can't think of her name right now but. She's supposed to be my client, but Judy's the one that's kind of helping out on the tech end. But either way, oh yeah, but not important at this point. So I, I haven't almost done anything yet. But I mean, it's I'm still figuring out how to make it run on my PC without it dropping frames really badly. Because I think it for some reason my computer was like, oh, you can do this on low ray tracing. I'm like, I'm gonna trust your judgment, but I'm doubting this. And it ran fine at the start. As soon as the tutorial spots were done, it was flatlining. I'm like, okay. We're going to media. <laughs> we cannot do low ray tracing, apparently. The problem is you're just being a giant nerd with your PC game and just get a console like a normal person. Well, but I want to play with mouse and keyboard. And now that I've started playing with mouse and keyboard, I like it a lot better. Because when I played it on console, yeah. it just didn't feel right with a controller. And I say this as somebody who's played shooters on a controller forever. But Cyberpunk, for whatever reason, felt not as good. 
I, I don't know. Maybe I maybe I had to mess with the sensitivity some more. But now that I've got it with mouse and keyboard, I feel like I'm way more accurate. So it's helping me. Because normally, like, again, I play Destiny with a controller. When I try playing with mouse and keyboard, it fucks me up. I can't do it. So it, it, it usually controller with first person shooter is where I lean. This is one of those rare cases where it doesn't. But yeah, mm. I'll, I'll obviously get back to you guys further when I actually get anywhere a bit a bit deeper into it. But I mean, it's fine. I haven't gotten deep enough to have any opinion on it right now, other than the fact of uh, Judy's super attractive, and that's all I need to say. Did you go Corpo? Did you go Nomad? Or did you go Street oh, Kid? Oh, you go Corpo. Come on. Oh, come on. You're, of course, you went Corpo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I read it, I'm you? gonna I'm gonna do Street Kid. I think I'm, I'm Street sure Kid's the way to go. Yeah, I started that last time. I'm gonna restart it, but uh, yeah, I think I'll stick with my street kid. I just thought I feel Corpo like was gonna game be game like is... the better option in terms of like negotiating stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm already gonna be a wise ass already, and I'm gonna know shit. I should be in a good spot. You played yeah, too much I... Bethesda games. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like the game was written to be a street kid, personally. But it has that vibe, which think... is also why I immediately went Corporal because I'm like, fuck you, I'm not gonna do what you want me to. <laughs> I'm not gonna do what you want. You're not my real dad. um for me i actually uh finished two games uh this week uh not start to finish just this week i just finally finished them the first being starfield i don't think i had finished it last week i said i had finished a lot of it but i hadn't actually finished it i rolled credits on it and i actually didn't mind the main story and i feel like i'm the only one who thinks that way i (laughs) i don't mind it it i just don't have anything nice to say about it (laughs) It didn't go the direction I thought it was going to go, and I would have still preferred like a whole bunch more wonderment without all the like, like ooh magic powers and all that kind of stuff. I would have preferred just like you know the start of the universe. Universe, where did everybody come from? I don't know, something more mm. like meaningful and less like oh fantastical with like you know hold L and B to make gravity do what you want or some shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't actually mind it. Uh, I I actually enjoyed it. I still. Liked it. I thought it was an interesting choice with obviously the New Game Plus stuff like that kind of thing. Um, but I still think the game, to me, is is a solid game. I do really, really like Starfield. I'm, I'm, I would go back to it. I can see myself feeling the same way about it. Not as much as Skyrim. Like Skyrim, once every like five years, I hear like a couple of the songs from Skyrim just in like some relaxing YouTube video for like studying to, even though I'm not studying kind of thing. Um, and I like have this craving to just go back into the Skyrim world and walk around and do something. Um, I can see myself doing that with Starfield, probably not as often, um, but I could see it where like 10 years from now, I'd want to like load it back up and, you know, go through it again, make different choices, be a different kind of character. Um, that kind of stuff, but I, I did very much enjoy the game, and I have some stuff I want to talk about, but it's all so spoilery, but it's just because of choices I made. I want to definitely tell you guys, because it has to do with the fact of I got married, and then things happened, and then, yeah, like, Did, did I don't you know. get the divorce? It's, no, not in the way you'd think. I <laughs> Oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah. It's and, okay. Uh, the I person mean, they chose, I was like, nah, I'm okay with that. That's fine. So it gets a lot more interesting as the story kept going because of the character choices I had made. I'll I'll talk with you guys about it after, but it made the game, and I think this is why I liked the main story so much, because for my character and the choices I made, I created a whole fucking situation. I just <laughs> it was awkward as hell. Um, which made it actually like more like, you know, a a better story for me because of how I ended up doing it. Um, So I was like, oh, this is crazy. I can't believe I ended up in this situation. It's my own fault. But yeah, so either way, though, Starfield, really great. Um, The other game I played through and beat was Super Mario Wonder. I did the game 100%. I did the special world, just like Super Mario World, where there was like the special area and everything like that you could warp up to. I did everything. Each level has like two seeds you can get. Some have three with like secret exits. No spoilers here. This is just typical Super Mario uh, kind of stuff going on here. And I finished it today. It was oh so good. It is easily the best 2D Mario since Super Nintendo. Like... Yoshi's Island Super Mario World, this is right up there with this. Very heavily inspired by Super Mario World, but like 
obviously just upgraded to I'd say modern systems. It's a switch, but I mean, 60 frames per second looked gorgeous. It's a cartoon style look, so they can make it look obviously really good on that system. I cannot suggest it enough, especially even just for the online part. The final stage in the special world, I'm not going to spoil anything about it. The only thing I'm going to say is it was really fucking hard because it's a special stage and it's the final one. So obviously there's a bunch of shit happening in it. And the whole game is about the wonder, like where you get the wonder flower and something crazy happens. Final stage is just like wonder flower times 10. Like shit's just going off the walls and you have to survive. It was more like a one of those crazy Mario Maker levels that people would make where it's like, yeah, good luck to you. Um, <laughs> but having other people there, you're not playing with them. You just see their ghost. But if you die... And you have five seconds. If you get to one of the, the other players that you can kind of see and they touch you, they bring you back. And there are actually just people that hang out around the last level to help carry people through that level. Like I was having that happen. I was like, this is such like a humble Super Mario moment. Like this is nothing that existed with a Nintendo game that I can think of before. This is something you'd more think of like playing online with like Sackboy or something on Sony where other people would be there. Maybe they'd carry you through a hard level. Having it on a Nintendo console, it was like blowing my mind because also just running around the map, going in a level, wherever you were, you could see just numerous people playing the game with you, even on the world map at any given time. And it was just... It was surreal, to be honest. Like, it was just such a really cool experience that it's like playing, you know, with somebody next to you playing Super Mario, only there's not two of you. There's like 16 of you, and it's just you're all playing at the same time and everything like that. So super, super good game. Like, I can't say enough good about that game. Like, easily the best 2D platformer I've played in an incredible amount of time, especially from like a triple A studio kind of idea. I think if I had to look for anything close to this, I'd have to look indie. I can't think of anything that comes close to this. Don't so, worry, yeah. Mac 3 will come out and completely just destroy it. That's They're what fossils. I was worried about. <laughs> yeah, I know Mario Wonder is like a game that I keep hearing more and more about and I want to just, I want to sink my teeth into, but my backlog's just getting so big with everything that's coming out. So, oh, um, 100%. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah, still playing these Kingdom Hearts through. games to play. <laughs> They're not going to play themselves, and I'm certainly not going to. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm still just burning my way through Cyberpunk, living my Cyberpunk fantasy life, and it's great. I absolutely love it. Um, super enthralled. I finally met Idris Elba in the game. It's just, it's so good. It is so good. And I just, I love how much they still have like Keanu Reeves in this game. Like, you figure, like, oh, Idris Elba's in Keanu's out. No, Keanu's in this the whole time. And I just want to. I just want to hang out with Keanu Reeves, like Johnny Silverhand, like all the time. Like, forget all the other characters. It's just me and Johnny just hanging out, burning through this world. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I got to start this. I got to I'm going to grab the Phantom Liberty, but and, and just like play through the game again. It's the backlog mm -hmm. issue, obviously. But yeah, I have to. Yeah, My goal I, is I to like... start it before. And I feel like that's the way to do it. I feel like the way to do it is to start it because like you can get access to this. I think about 10 hours into this game. Um, so maybe like about a third of the way through the game, you get access to it. And I'm playing it basically at the final level. Like I've done everything. I've got all the awesome stuff. So like they're like, hey, want this gun? I'm like, no, I've got the best gun in the game. And I'm just like one shot in everybody in the head with this awesome pistol that I've got. And it's like I'm having fun. But I feel like and this is the thing with DLC is I feel like DLC could sometimes be an issue in that you're taking like a game and you finished it, you multi, you're over classified for it. And then you just start over. And you're just overpowered. And that's kind of where I'm at right now, but I'm loving the story. I love that world. Like the cyberpunk world is just fantastic. And I love what they've done with it. Yeah. It sounds so good. Yeah. I always feel like DLC should be like after the end of the game. I know mm -hmm. horizon did a good job with that. I would say for forbidden West and, zero dawn like the dlc always took place after the main story so it wasn't just shoved in the middle and you had to all of a sudden go back and let your imagine believe imagination believe that you didn't already beat the game you're only halfway yeah. but very overpowered like yeah. yeah 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 but i mean like i said i still want to get into mario wonder but there's just been so many good games that got released this year so and with that being said let's talk about them uh, we are about a month out from the Game Awards for 2023. I think we're on the cusp of getting the nominations as well. And so 
Uh, Adam had the awesome idea that why don't we try and get into Jeff Keighley's head and see if we can predict what games are going to be nominated for game of uh, for for the award show for 2023. So Adam, I'm going to pass the baton over to you. I'll let you run with this as it is your idea. So yeah, it worked that, out pretty nicely, it, actually. I mean, the it. game awards are going to be December 7th, so we're not too far away. We're literally a full month away now. Uh, and they just announced, I can't, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, but the nominees are coming up on the 13th. So it ended up working out perfectly that we got to do this. So we're going to go through, we, we're not going to do every single award because let's be honest, we have no input in the esports categories. A bunch of the best game we're categories, morons. like family games, racing sports games, like we're not exactly like going to be throwing too many darts there because it's not really in our wheelhouse, but we ended up taking 12 different awards. So that way we have this evenly split between the three of us because we're going to do it like a draft format. It's not going to be a, we're just going to throw names there and just assume we're getting it. No, no, this is a game show. We are going for points here. So I'm going to cut to our trusty screen here on the video feed. And uh, we're going to start right at the top from game of the year. So the way we're doing this for those listening on audio is we're going to do this in snake draft format. So that means if you draft first, you don't draft till the very last pick. If you draft second, you draft then the second last pick. And then if you draft third, you immediately get to do a second pick. So, and once somebody picks thing, not like if I pick, you know, Spider-Man, Kalen picks Baldur's Gate, those are off the board for the rest of the round. So you can't use it again. We can use them in the next rounds because let's be honest, some of these games are going to get repeated several times over the course of these awards. But once they are put on the board in this category, they are off. So we can't do any duplicates. So, uh, Kalen, you're picking six. Good luck trying to figure out what the uh, the Dark Horse is going to be after all the main ones are gone. And just to clarify, this is not necessarily what we think are the game of the year. These are, no, this playing is the what game we think is going to be on the nominee list. Now, not yes. every I don't think every list is going to have six games, so we may not always get points. There may be five, because I think game of the year, they always put six, and I think for the, some of the other awards, they only do five. So... You're not even going to guarantee that even we could even go like six for six because there may not be six nominees to even take here, but mm -hmm. you're going to get two chances at a point regardless. So we'll see how that runs. Like I said, we're going to run through 12 categories. So it'll just be, we'll review next week on how many points each of us got. And we'll see, you know, just how much we know Jeff Keighley. Okay. So we are going to start yeah. off with game of the year. So the way this is going to work, Kalen's getting the first pick. So it's going to be Kalen, me, Chris twice, me, then Kalen. So Kalen... The floor is yours. What's one of the games you think is going to be game of the year for the nominees this year? Got the Nintendo bump, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild? Well, that's already a, a negative point. You mean Tears of the Kingdom? <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom! All right, Adam, you're up. There, was that so hard? <laughs> Uh, well, wow. I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna take the easy ones off the board, I think Baldur's Gate is the immediate other obvious one that's gonna come in here. So I'm just gonna take that off of there. I think those are basically the two you're gonna see fighting it, fighting it out. I don't think you're gonna see much else. I mean, there's there's gonna be a lot of good games this year. Like honestly, we're gonna probably at the end of the year go back and take like our five favorites and pair it up to the ones that we picked for our earlier episode where we talked about what the best uh, gaming year is and actually see where it places. Because I actually think like this year has been one of the best years that I can ever remember, especially be it's probably the best year since I was like fully in control of buying games. Yeah, it's definitely, this is definitely gonna be one of the best years. Chris, you're up double oh, header. Yeah. You got two picks. All right. Now. I'm going to go with uh, Starfield and Spider-Man two. Nice. Doesn't okay, fine. Photoshop's font that I picked does not like numbers or hyphens. Good to know. Gonna have to remember <laughs> that for next time. All right. And oh yeah, I, I guess I'll try to do it at the uh, beginning of every of every category. We'll announce what the winner was the previous year just so you guys have some reference. So obviously the game of the year last year was Elden Ring. Uh there won't be, at least in my opinion, any listing of from software in this one. I don't think Armor Core is gonna make the list there. Mm. Uh what do I have left on my list? It might be a little bit dark horsey, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Alan Wake 2 is actually going to get a nomination. I think mm. just based on the, the reviews that we've seen and just the overall production value that it's shown, I think this this might be a sleeper. Because I have a few like ideas back and forth indie-wise and also like outside of the main like AAA sphere, but I think 
if I was going to go off of one more big AAA game, I think the recency buys of Owl Wake 2 might give it a bit of an advantage here. So, Kao, and that leaves you with the last pick. You guys stay with my the Mario and the Nintendo camp. I'm going to go Mario Wonder. No. Perfect. Nintendo All doesn't let right. you down. So that yeah. is one category down for those listening. So Kalen is going with Tears of the Kingdom and Mario Bros. Wonder. So he is Nintendo fanboying. The Sony Pony has switched sides and is going Nintendo. I'll start when I got the Xbox. It He's all went downhill. switched <laughs> sides, if I may. I did a snap. <laughs> Uh, I'm going about this with Baldur's episode. Gate 3 and Alan Wake 2, and Chris will be going with Starfield and Spider-Man 2. So we will move on to best game direction. I have the unfortunate part of going first. Uh, last year, Elden Ring also won this award. Go figure. Elden Ring did, was expected to clean up last year, as, as they did. Um, best game direction, I'm kind of in the same boat of just leading off with Kaelin and going Tears of the Kingdom, because, I mean, Shigeru Miyamoto is going to get directional votes no matter what. So we might as well just yeah. take that off the list. At least on like Kalen, do I get an extra point just for actually saying the right name when I first made this pick? Do I get a bonus point for that? Huh? Huh? No. <laughs> no. No, I don't get a bonus point just because I'm dumb. Yeah. Mm. I just don't want you to get a bonus point because that means I don't get a bonus point. So you still get ahead of me, <laughs> which has nothing to do with Wait, me. And I'm that's not, not okay fair. I think I think Chris should get a bonus point too, but then you guys are ahead of me and I'm clearly not smart. Can I get a bonus point too? No. <laughs> This isn't Oprah. <laughs> All right, Chris, what you got? Pick number two. Uh, I'm going to go with, for game direction, I think Baldur's Gate. I think that there's going to be a big bias for, for them when it comes to like the actual direction of the game. Yeah, I mean, Larry and Kudos, you kind of got to expect is going to have some, uh, yeah. some goodwill after, after what they've put together. Good Lord. If there, if yeah, there was I a was game gonna... for best put together game, hmm, that's, that's going to be up there. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna go Baldur's Gate three, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna stick with Mario Wonder. All right. Well you got one more pick because you're third and fourth. What you got on the second side? Um the second one, I think I'm gonna go hard. I got two options. I think I'm gonna go Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Mmm. Another another wrong name. Yep, yeah, nailing it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even pick Kalen's up on that struggling one. over there. That's I'm just waiting for when he goes to pick Starfield. I play just... like three games a year. Well, Kalen's Kay- gonna Kay- pick Starfield time. and he's gonna accidentally say Skyrim. <laughs> Alright, Chris, All what's right. your second pick? Uh in the words of Kalen, I'm gonna go with Spider-Man Miles Morales. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> Spider-Man 2, obviously. <laughs> for uh Insomniac's direction there. All right, I got a couple directions and left with my list. I'm actually going to, you know, we were talking about we don't think the remakes are going to get a lot. I'm actually going to go out there and say Resident Evil 4 remake is going to get a mm, hit here. That's a good pick. I, w- I was going between that pick. and Alan Wake 2 again. I'm just going to, even though I really should probably go with go with Alan Wake 2 for, for, um, for Remedy on this one. I I feel like because there's going to be some awards that aren't that some games are going to end up needing to get a couple just so their their studios or their publishers feel okay. I feel like Capcom's going to get thrown a bone here because look, Capcom's been having some good runs, but like this year is so goddamn jam packed that they're going to have a hard time finding anything in here. So yeah, but yeah, that's going to do. Who won last that. year? What's that? Elden Ring. Did we say who? Yeah, won last year won for last game year. director. Yeah, that was also Elden Ring. Elden yeah. Ring won everything last year. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> as we move on to the next category, that's not true, because we're on to best narrative, and the winner last year was uh, Dad of War Ragnarok. Yeah, Dad of War. So, Chris, Ooh. you may start off. You were the number one pick for this one. Yeah, this one's tough with the narrative. Uh, yeah, this but one's I'm a little gonna trickier. Stay, yeah, I'm going to stay safe for my first answer, Spider-Man 2. Pretty uh, narrative-heavy game. You screwed up. You think so? Yeah. No. Uh best no. narrative. I'm I'm going Baldur's Gate. All right. Now I gotta go two. This is where it gets tricky. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm gonna I've got a lot of backups here, so that's why I'm like 
this is where the struggle comes in because now we're talking story so we're not necessarily going gameplay to have anything to do with it here or the quality of the game we're thinking what could get story votes so i'm going to start off right away with star wars jedi survivor i think that will probably get some looks at and I'm going to go off the board a little bit and go with Sea of Stars, because I think this is where that indie game is going to get a little bit of shine here. Yep. So, Kaylin, you got the fifth pick here. <clears throat> I was going to go Jedi Survivor, but that one is crazy. That's part of why I wanted to take it, because I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put for number, my number two, I'm going to put Alan Wake 2. All right, Chris, and that leaves you. I'm going to go a little risky, and I'm not saying it deserves this. I'm saying I think this is what people will, might vote for Final Fantasy 16. That was one mm. of my backups that I was considering. The other one that I was... Such a... My crazy dark horse, if you guys really took all my picks somehow, it would have been Hogwarts Legacy. I thought there was a sleeper chance it could get Yeah. Out. Yep. That was, a, that was a tough one to pick between, though. So I, I really had to think that... I had a galaxy brain that one a little bit. Moving on, one art direction. Last year, last year Elden we... Ring picked up that one, so we're right back to where we started. Uh, speaking right back to where we started, Kalen's got the first pick again. Sea of Stars. That's a good one. That's Ooh, good that one. is a good one. Way to steal it from me, dude. I'm immediately going to go Hi-Fi Rush then. I've been waiting a while to say this game. I'm so mad that I don't think this is going to get a Game of the Year nominee now because it, I think it deserves it, but... There's so much now. My God, like Star, like with Starfield, Spider Man, Alan Wake Two came coming in, and I went screw. Hi Fi Rush is screwed now. Alan Wake Two is even good, apparently. <laughs> so that, that right, was rough. well, I'm gonna go with two that I think are gonna be nominated. I'm gonna give Hogwarts Legacy one here, just because I believe in the Hogwarts Castle design that strongly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if I want to do this one. You guys stole all the freaking good ones. You're I hate welcome. you guys. <laughs> well, they <laughs> like, had the coolest looking art. Of course, we're going to pick them. They did. That was my issue. They're, I'm like, these are just art. I'm going to choose them. Um, uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Super Mario Wonder. I'm going to give it to it just because of how much they upgraded the, uh, like the style of the game. And there's a lot more to the actual art in it. Like the actual backgrounds are very vivid and like actual layers and stuff. I, I, I'm going to give it to Super Mario Wonder. So I'm going to take a super risk here at number five. This this could be one that I could get a real, real good point on and also one that I could just completely be throwing one away. Uh, I don't know if you guys even heard of this game, but I because I know this is definitely going to be getting indie votes, because of its visuals, I'm going to take a shot at a game called Chance of Sonar. And oh, if you've yeah. never heard of it, Google it, and you'll understand why I'm going with this, because I think that's a sleeper just for its visual look, because it's such a unique design. And I think that's one that, that might get some sleeper votes, and I think that might also get an indie. I have a couple oh, of yeah. indies, and I'll, and I'll go through that in our honorable mentions when we finish up here. But yeah, like there there was a couple here on the, on the secret Dark Horse side that I was really fighting on, and this is the one I'm going to kind of go with on this. Um, I'm going to go channeling the Elden Ring category. I'm going to go Lies of P. Oh, that's a good one. That was all. That was one of mine. My bad. That's a very good one. Yeah, because the I had Alan Wake too. Because again, Remedy has some pretty striking visuals there. And the other one I thought of it was also Cocoon, which is also a really visually striking indie oh, game. I played through Cocoon. That was so good. Very yeah, beautiful. That was a real tough one. Like there was a few of them where I'm like, man, I have no idea. Like there are so many different directions. Because again, you think Sea of Stars, amazing pixel art. You think Hi Fi Rush, amazing like cell shaded art. But you also got to be like, they're gonna go between like the good realism. They're also gonna go between the unique. So that was the tough thing of deciding between them, right? So. Oh yeah. Well, that's yeah. that's gonna be an interesting one for getting some points on that because I think other than some of our easy guesses, I think there's a few in there that were gonna be tough. So we're moving on. We haven't gotten too many uh, different games here because we're on to best score of music and God of War Ragnarok picked up that one. So we've only had two games so far win awards yet. So I'm going <laughs> to lead us off here. Yeah, I'm just going to go with Hi-Fi Rush to start with. That music is just so god. It's a friggin' rhythm-based game. Of course, the, it's going to have best music uh, in there at some point. Uh, All right, Chris. Uh, For my first Spider-Man 2, I'm going to go with that just because the score is so, like, 
like, I mean, heavy blockbuster right? movie. Yeah, like just all of that. Like I, I have to give it to that. Mm-hmm. Kaylin, you got the next two. Uh, JRPG King putting his crown back on. Crown back on. I'm going to go Final Fantasy 16. Ooh. I mean, Final actually, Fantasy the, ba- games the boss are battles always a guarantee. Like that's almost a guaranteed lock for music because it's really hard for Square to not do that. <laughs> That's when you know yeah. something's something either is really bad or like it's been an amazing year if Squares has a Final Fantasy game and it doesn't get a best score nomination. Yeah. yeah. Uh and then I'm gonna I got a couple ways I'm gonna go with this, but I think I think the easy one is uh Mario Wonder. Okay. All right, Chris. Uh, number two. I have a really like risky one i kind of want to do and like a super safe one i have a real think- risky one i'm tempted to do i'm not gonna lie <laughs> all right you know what i'm gonna do the risky one i'm gonna do the risky one just because this is literally a game about music and that's theater rhythm final bar line or whatever the heck that's called that came out the fact you can barely name the title <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny it's square enix they name their games weird sometimes the Atr- <laughs> theater rhythm theatrium Final bar. Oh, Final line. Fantasy music game. <laughs> Actually, what, just save yourself time. Don't write it down because it's not coming on the list. Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, yeah, I'm because going you did one. it, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my crazy one too. I'm going with Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. What? Which is a game that was, was made How? to be an homage to Jet Set Radio, which, if people yeah, remember, that has is... a really good soundtrack. No, when I said what, I because because I forgot that came out, and now my mind got blown because that's such an actual good pick. Yeah, I went a little. I thought you just board, made that up. I think that's that's a good one. <laughs> this is like, you guys be are just also a really tough one coming up next. Now we got best audio design. This is where it is a real wild card because a lot of things can be available for this now. Yeah. Last Who year, won last year? We're still only at two games. Got to Ragnarok won this one. So by this logic, I don't know why we're picking all these all these other games. Like we know which ones uh, are gonna win. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Chris, what you got? Oh right, I'm first. Ooh. Um. Oh, I'm going to take it. Hi-Fi Hi-Fi Rush. I feel like just all of the audio that was used, obviously, in that very audio-heavy game. It's an easy pick. Kalen? Uh, Making its first appearance is Dead Space Remake. I have that on my list. That was going to be one of mine. All right, well, if that's the case, I'm going to take Starfield off the list, and then I will go with Alan Wake 2 on this one. Damn it! You bad. That was my... Damn Look, it. you took one of mine, I gotta take one back. It's only fair. Uh, oh, crap, it's on me. Uh, uh, <laughs> crap, I don't have anything off the top of my head. I'm gonna put Jedi Survivor, the lightsaber. Yeah, that's smart. All right, Chris. And I'm gonna go with Spider-Man 2, just because of some of the audio they would have used for, like, creating Venom's voice, you know, like, that kind of stuff. Very cool. Is it enough to win? I don't know. It's the sixth pick, right? Yeah, I was torn between Alan Wake 2 as my second guess and Resident Evil 4. I was kind of thinking on, the, again, that line. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, does Resident Evil get another bone on that one? So that brings us up to... This is going to be probably the hardest one to predict. I mean, there's going to be a couple easy ones, but after that, it's going to be difficult. Best performance, so best voice acting. And I, I said it before we started recording. If you guys need a hand with some of these, I do have backup lists if you need them, so... Yeah, I have four, and I get to do three and four. You guys can't possibly steal from me. Heck yeah. We'll see. <laughs> but, Kalen, you got the first guess here. I don't agree with it. This isn't my choice, but I've heard people talk about it. Five from Final Fantasy sixteen. That was uh, one ben of my Star? picks. Yeah. Ben Star. Whatever. You didn't think so? Maybe it's just no. because you haven't played the other Final Fantasies where the voice acting was, like, nowhere near as good. All right, well, I'll, take the, the, I'll, I'll take the what I think is the actual easy one off the board, and that's Yuri Lowenthal as uh, as Peter Parker, which just mm-hmm. absolutely fucking killed it. And as yeah. as a guy who is who has seen a lot of his different performances, it's just one of those things where I'm so glad when guys really get to show their stuff because Yuri's been Yuri's been in the game a long time, and I really hope that he actually wins this one because he's a journeyman. He deserves some real credit. He's been doing this for a long time. Yeah, Final Fantasy X main character even. Yep. Going back. All right, so three and four for me. Uh, I'm going to go with Naji Jeter. I hope I'm saying that right, but that's Miles Morales. 
um, from Spider-Man 2. <laughs> N-A-D-J-I. N-A-D-J-I. I was close. I, was, I didn't have the, uh, the, the D in that one. Yeah. And that's uh, for Miles Morales, or autocorrect on my phone, Mike's Morales, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was from Marvel's um, Wolverine. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go with Robbie Damon, who's Chai from Hi-Fi Hi Rush, because nice. I thought his voice acting, like he was just a charming, like perfect, I thought, character. He had like that Saturday morning cartoon voice acting down. I just thought it was perfect. I got, yeah, I actually got the name right. What do you know? All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really torture Kalen with this one. I am going to take Cameron Monaghan as Cal Kestis from Jedi Survivor. <laughs> uh, well, all mine are used up, but I'm done, so that's good. That's a, actually, that's a lie. I'm changing my mind on this. I'm gonna. I'm, I actually don't think that. Like, I, I'm gonna pick one over the other. I'm actually gonna go with. I think it's Ilka Vili as Alan Wake. Ah. Uh. I I was half between Cal and that, and then I went. You know what? No, I kind of trust myself on Alan Wake more than I trust on Jedi Survivor on this one. But I guess I leave the door open for Kale, and if he doesn't want to have to think too hard about it. <laughs> the sorting hat from Hogwarts Legacy. Come on, say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to check one thing. Your name hunting? Yeah. I got one person. Because, yeah, I, who I, it I have is. a few, like, other ones. Because like, I was thinking, like, okay, I'm thinking, like, okay, we're going with what are the biggest games? Who are the voice actors for them? And it was just trying to do like, okay, who do I think is going to get attention? Now that, that was the real Link. challenge. Link to be honest, the there are so many over. names in this game, and I don't know who to go with. So I'm gonna go with Theo Solomon from Baldur's Gate. He plays Will Bernard. He plays a bunch of characters, but really, you could take anyone from the Baldur's Gate. They were all fantastic voice actors. Special shout out to Amelia Tyler who did the narrator's voice. That one was really good. Yeah, and, and here's the thing, like, people are going to look at this and be like, oh, so you don't think any women are going to win? I have female backups. It's just when you give me the choice of what's on my board, I, I had to pick Alan Wake over anything else. Because I also have uh, Melanie Liberta Saga Anderson from Alan Wake 2, and I also have uh, Laura Bailey as Mary Jane Watson for Spider-Man 2. But, like, oh, yeah. You know, like, I know there's going to be a couple of female nominees in there, but, like, when you're giving me the choice in a draft, mm, I had to lean with these two for my picks there. So Can I just change my... Can I just change mine to anyone from Baldur's Gate? Because there's so many and they're all so good. <laughs> no, because Baldur's Gate's going to be on every one of these and you're just going to steal. Can I just put Baldur's Gate across the board? <laughs> I, t well, I said in the chat beforehand, it's like, guys, if you let me pick Baldur's Gate every time, I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah, I didn't also say who uh, won performance last time. That was uh, Christopher Judge in God of War. So again, we're still at two games. Yeah, we're oh. still at two games. I'm all so right. screwed with Moving best on. action we game. Jump, we jump a bunch of categories in the order on the nominee screen. We all go all the way to best action game because there's a lot like games for impact, best VRAR, like stuff like that. Like we're, we basically just be throwing random things out there. That's not, we don't have as much like field of view. It's on not our style. One. Like the performances one was the hardest one for us because it's putting actual names to characters. That was the difficult one. Yeah. Cause you said, I can't just pick a game and say Baldur's Gate. No, no. Cause that's not what the nomination is. Ah, best action game. All right. What do I take off the list to just screw you guys immediately? Oh, yeah, right. Hi-Fi Rush. Done. Have fun. You son of a... Please, you wasted it. You wasted that Wasted spot. it? That was one of two options I had written down. <laughs> All right. keep in mind, too, gotta... we're also doing action adventure, so keep in mind what you're picking, because they may not put... They may not consider that to be an action game, or they may not consider your action adventure game to be an action adventure game, so... You're, these two categories are going to be fun because you're also assuming you know which category it's going to get put into. That's true. <sighs> okay. All right. I'm going to go. I got to ask a question. Is Super Mario Wonder an action game? I know it's a platformer. Side. If you want my opinion, I think that's going to go in the family category. <sighs> that's great because that was I'm my only will, other I'm option. I'm willing to do that for people. If you want to bounce off opinions, I'm willing to help with that. And that's not me trying to take you away from putting games on the list so you get points i'm being honest all right all right you know what i'm gonna go with L lies of p that's got to be an action game right yeah that would definitely qualify i that's on my list too and now to google 
or my other one because right, Caleb, you guys you're are... up for two. Honestly, like when are I was we... picking games, this is probably the most challenging one because action adventure games and RPGs, there were a lot. Action, if you actually look at like the best games this year, not a lot of them I would consider to be action. Do we think DLC games are going to get on this list or no? Well, like Phantom of Liberty? Yeah. I see. I would also consider that it to be in the role playing game section too, personally. Yeah, but I like. Do you think? Do you think DLC is going to get on there? I don't think it will. I think there's a chance of it. Okay, that doesn't fill me with confidence. Uh, I'm going to put Dead Space. Uh yeah. And then I'm going to put uh, Alan Wake Two. Okay. Chris, right. you're up. I'm. If those work, then I'm going with Resident Evil Four. All right, well, that makes it I mean, easy for are... me because I will immediately go with Armored Core 4 or Armored Core 6, uh, Fires of oh, Rubicon, because at some out. point, From Software <laughs> has to get a nomination. Isn't it Fires Over Rubicon? Uh, I think it's Fires of... Well, let's double check here. Yep, Fires of Rubicon. Ha! <laughs> I'm not Fair getting enough. names wrong today. How did none of us put Spider-Man on best action game? Because I think it's action adventure. I have that under action. I think it's action. Okay, well then, cool. Well, the reason, here, here's what I look at action. Action is basically reflexes, reaction, stuff like that. Whereas action adventure is that plus things like puzzle solving, like dialogue choices, stuff like that. See, I went an opposite way because I went action adventure and action, the differentiator between the two being action adventure. Adventure has that exploring and generally more open world versus That's, that's why I also would consider action more linear. to be the action adventure. I mean, there's not much to explore. Anyways, moot point. <laughs> Leaning well, into action, best action adventure. Chris, well, actually, I better pull up the uh, the winner from last year. Oh, yeah, it was Bayonetta 3 won best action game. So finally, a third game showed up. Wow. And now God of War Ragnarok took best action adventure, so we haven't changed anything since. So, Chris, <laughs> are you just going to say Spider-Man 2 now that we've just talked about it over and over? No. Tears of the Kingdom. Damn Good it. Point. <laughs> Good point. Good point. That is literally the adventure game. All right, fine. Kalen, what do you got? Starfield. Okay, fine. I'll say Marvel Spider-Man 2. I'm fucking taking it. I don't care. And uh, I'll take Star Wars Jedi Survivor on this one. Damn it. Judy <laughs> Survivor. Good lord, I can't type. No, no. Judy needs to survive too. <laughs> Judge Judy? She would make a good Sith, honestly. She would be. I would, I'd want her to win too, though. That's the issue. Um, I'm going to put Final Fantasy 16. I would I would say no to that. That will go in the role playing game section. But it's not a role playing game. Let's be it real. It is. It's not. They will consider it as such. I mean, if you want to throw well, this, the point away, go ahead. Yeah, fine. I still say it's action adventure. There's, <laughs> there's no role playing in that game. Are you going with it? Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> Can't say I didn't give him a chance. Hmm. Are you t- wait, are you telling me that you think Final Fantasy 16 is a role-playing game? Because it is not. It's a JRPG. Yes, it will be. <laughs> no, it is not a JRPG. It is just well, a JRPG. You can JRPG say whatever screen. it is, but like I know how the voters will go. They will absolutely put that in what a role-playing role play game. Was? There was no role-play. You didn't have you dialogue You role-played choices. as a terrible character. That's all I will say. <laughs> By that logic, so Spider-Man's a role-playing game because you can choose between Spider-Man and Miles Morales. Look, I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you how I know it. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go with Hogwarts Legacy oh, for my last one. Good. That's a good choice. See yeah, them I, getting I thrown had a few on different you. ideas. I was still putting Resident Evil 4 and Alan Wake into that. But Resident Evil, I was kind of like, no, is that action? Is that action Avenger? So I kind of had it on the back burner. I think Star Wars is going to probably be a good... Star Wars and Tears of the Kingdom are the two, two frontrunners, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. We are three categories left to go. Best role playing game. Let's see. Who won that one? I imagine we got a four Nope, never mind, it was Elden Ring. We're still at three games. <laughs> this is crazy. Alright, JRPG year, King. Uh you have the first overall pick. What you got? Baldur's Well. That was difficult. All right, I guess that's up to me. Well, I'll take see if Star You guys are all wasting time. It's Baldur's Gate. Fuck. Why would you take Messy as Stars? Because I know what you're going to pick. All right, you got two. So is Starfield a role-playing game? I thought it would have been a role-playing game. I, I mean, if, if I personally am leaning that way. If Adam's going to say that Final Fantasy 16 is a role-playing game, then Starfield is. 
like that that's tough like i honestly could go either way with starfield on that one that's it's difficult honestly yeah because everything else i have even listed isn't role playing like, you know what yeah. call star like most people would call bethesda's games of western rpgs that's kind of where my brain's sat right yeah all right, I'm going with Starfield and Final Fantasy 16 because <laughs> genres of games suck. It's so hard to tell. <laughs> All right, well, I'll take the other one that you guys weren't thinking of, Diablo 4. Oh, no, I had Diablo 4 on my list, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't even this, know it Honestly, down. I don't even care if I win. My favorite part of this whole thing has been taking stuff away from people <laughs> or like making people go, why didn't I think of that? I don't even have Diablo 4 li listed in the games that came out this year. Clearly, it just didn't hit me like I thought it would. Which is making me sad because I want to put Trails into Reverie in there, but I still don't think... Like, honestly, if this was last year, I would have been so happy to see Trails finally get its first recognition as a nomination, but this year is too goddamn strong. Yeah. If it had been a couple days earlier, I would have said, like, if the... Cause the nominations are going to line up, but I was going to say Super Mario RPG but it doesn't come out in time for the nominations. What do I put? What do I put on this last one? It's tough. It is a tough one. Mm -hmm. Was Witcher 3 re-released? You can just pick that probably. <laughs> no. I mean, shit, you could, you could try Phantom Liberty, honestly. <laughs> I'm either... Because Jedi Survivor wasn't super RPG-esque. Yeah, and I, I would consider that to be the action adventure, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Because it's got right. that like Uncharted feel to it, right? So I, I would assume that that would lean more to the action adventure side. Um, I don't want to put Phantom Liberty because I have a feeling that because that, it's DLC, it's not going to get nominated. I'm going to put Octopath Traveler 2. That's a nice sleeper, honestly. Honestly, yeah. it would it I it was I I originally had like much longer than I had six for everything just in case. I mm -hmm. had much longer list for some Octopath was on there cuz I'm like, "Ah, oh, JRPG, just think of anything that came out this year." And then eventually I'm like, "Oh yeah, Western RPGs exist. Uh, oh, that's going to take a few names out." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we're on to our last two categories that have nothing to do with games that came out this year, but in some ways I guess they do. Uh best adaptation. Damn it. I'm so, in the middle. TV shows and movies. So I'm obviously going to take one off the board. That's don't, just don't you, you do guys, it. Don't you, guys you do need it. To, you guys need to know that I hate you so much. The biggest one out there was Gran Turismo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then I better be nice to Kaylin, and I'm going to go with the Super Mario movie. Ah. Because we if I nice take that other one from Kalen, like I can't, I don't know what else he'd have. <laughs> it's really nothing. Uh, it's gonna be Last of Us. Uh, is up there, best adaptation. Yeah. And then, oh my God, what what were some of the big adaptations this year? Like, honestly, those are the three big ones. That's the thing, right? I've got I one think... more. You want you want to share it with the group? No, because you'll take it. And then I'll have nothing. No, for my that's not my style. I'm not doing that. Uh, there was a uh, Castlevania. Yeah, there's anime. Castlevania. I, yeah, I have three still, that, so I'm prepared. I'm gonna put Five Nights at Freddy's. We're going on that. Right? That was one. Oh, of them. that's a good one. I forgot that came out. All right, Chris, All right then I'll with go Castlevania with Castlevania. Then Castlevania. Yeah. Nocturne, and I will go with the Onimusha anime that just came out. Right. Yes. Literally I'm just. Think, happened. Wait, I'm Did Cyberpunk come out this year? Or last year. No, that was like I actually I didn't even see oh. who won. I think they actually won last year. No, it was that other one that won the. No, um, it was Arcane League of Legends. That's right. But yeah, that's what I'm Edge Runners was, uh, which I still need to watch. I've been told by several people I need to fucking watch that show. So that was honestly that's a pretty good um year too because that was Arcane League of Legends, which I don't care about, but I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. Uh, Edge Runners oh, Cuphead so Show, good. which I also need to to watch. Sonic mm -hmm. the Hedgehog two and Uncharted. So, like, that's actually pretty decent. Uncharted's not bad. It's fine. Like, it's not It's not great, but it's not bad. It's a perfect Netflix movie. Yeah, exactly. All right. Last award. Most anticipated game. Tears of the Kingdom won last Wait. year. So, last year... And here's the... So, just for interesting... So, here's the five games that were named last year. It was Final Fantasy XVI, which did all right. Hogwarts Legacy, which some people say did great, and I will say are 
or uh, rose colored glasses a little bit too much. Uh, Resident Evil 4, which is funny that a remake was put as a nominee for a most anticipated game, but we'll probably put at least one or two of those on this list. And then Starfield. But yeah, Tears of the Kingdom obviously won last year, which came just as a surprise to no one. Have yeah. we got a lot of games announced for 2024? Like, I feel like there's not been that much announced. Yeah, they're, they're, well, it's, it's more of just what you, what you have a feeling. Because again, they don't always assume that they're coming next year. That's, mm. It's just what's like in the ether that people are looking forward to. So, Chris, you're leading us off. All right, well, I'm going to steal one from Kaylin, unfortunately. Star Wars Outlaws. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. I didn't even think about that one. That's a good yeah. one. Because that one's apparently coming out next year. I don't believe it, but... Right, uh, I'm going to put Metal Gear Solid 3. Ooh, Metal good Gear one. Metal Gear Solid Delta, Snakey. Whatever. Whatever. All right. Well, I'll say... T- I was going to go off the board, but you guys gave me two easy ones. So Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and uh, Marvel's Wolverine. Mm. you fuck because I, I had a bunch of other sleepers all there there's an obvious one that i'm jeff keely braining this so that's my only hint i'll give you guys if you're looking for one i don't know what that means that's like i said <laughs> it's the best i can do i don't know what that's supposed to suggest i'll explain after if you don't pick it <laughs> yeah that I one's more okay go yeah. ahead i'm trying to figure out what's going on what's coming there's not much because I've got a few of you neat ideas. No, no, I'm, I'm a big boy. I can figure this out myself. What were some of the games that came out like at the show that we were like, oh, that looks awesome? Uh, Kingdom Hearts 4. Now pass. <laughs> I tried. I can't, I, I, can't, counted. I can't even say those. Those words can't even come out of my mouth. Uh, I'm going to put... Ah, crap. I'm going to put the Helldivers 2. No, I'm going to put that Bungie Marathon again. That's what I'm putting. Okay. Oh, and Marathon. Chris. Oh, nice. That Helldivers 2 was actually the one I was going to go with. So when Kayla started talking, I'm like, no. <laughs> so here I had four that you got because I put a bunch because I had no yeah. idea which direction I was going to go in. So I had Hellblade 2 for Xbox purposes. Mm-hmm. Oh, Hellblade uh, I had 2. Hades, Hades 2. Mm. Oh, that's coming out. Oh, Silent cool. Hill 2. Mm. And the Jeff Keighley brain I was originally going to go with if you guys hadn't given me the two softball ones, uh, Death Stranding 2, because you got to get that Kojima in there. Oh, uh, yeah. But you see, that's the thing. Yep. None of those games are ones I'm anticipating. You may not be, but I'm, ju- I'm trying to Jeff Keighley brain it. That's true. Oh, yeah. That's that's our full list. So we are going to review next week when the nominations come in because they're going to come in, I believe, the day before we record next time because because it'll be the fourteenth when we record yeah. and I believe it's the thirteenth that's coming out. So we'll know. Yeah. And I'll have to do all the tally work and we'll and we'll find out who is the real Jeff Keeley. And by Jeff Keeley, I mean I guess the group of people that set the nominees up. I don't know. <laughs> well, in our it's group, just Jeff Keeley. In our group, Adam, you're Jeff Keeley because. Kalen's already Phil Spencer in disguise. We already know that constantly this happens. <laughs> so I guess because awesome. we, we actually did this faster than I thought we were going to. I thought we were going to be like well over an hour. We're not even at an hour yet. So why don't we do one quick thing before we shut it off. Let's go through our list and actually just quickly pick what we think will win out of these. This is, has nothing to do with points, but just for our own fun here. Sure. So right, so right. Actually, we'll go backwards since we're already here. Most anticipated game, uh, Chris. You, what do you think is going to win out of these six? Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Kalen, what do you got? Outlaws. Uh, I'll actually go with Snake Eater on this one. Although my, I want Rebirth over anything else, but I think Snake Eater also has some people's attention there. So we'll see what happens. We all there. chose each you. other's answer. We didn't even know, go with our own answer. <laughs> uh, best adaptation. Or, uh, we all I'll, I'll right? start. Uh, oh, Last of Us. That's easy. We all yeah, agree it's the Last of Us. Yeah, it's the I would Last say either us. Last of Us or Mario. Mario could be. It's between. What, you those don't two. think yeah. that Five Nights at Freddy's is gonna? <laughs> it's a place filler. It's a placeholder. So it's like literally four of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, best role playing game. I assume we all agree it's Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Baldur's yep. Gate. Yeah, that's an easy one. Action adventure. I assume we all think it's Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. 
Best action game. That's an interesting one. I'm going to go with Hi-Fi Rush. I'm going to choose Hi-Fi. No, I'm going Lies of P for some reason. I'm going Dead Space. That's a good sleeper pick, honestly. Uh, mm-hmm. Best performance. This this is a fucking wild card. I have no clue where they're going. I have on no. One. I have no thoughts. I'm just going to say Yuri Lowenthal for Spider-Man, but that's just me favoritizing him at this point. I'm not even going to put my name in this one. I'm going to say <laughs> someone from Baldur's Gate. I honestly think it will be someone. I was I told that's know. not an, that's not an appropriate choice. <laughs> I know that's a problem. I don't, if I'd played the game, I'd be like the guy who played, you know, the guy with the white hair on the box art. I don't know. Like I'd pick <laughs> someone. <laughs> All right. So yeah, going with design, Chris. Ooh, uh, I'm gonna go with Hi-Fi Rush, I think, just because, yeah, I'm going Hi-Fi Rush. I say Hi-Fi Rush or Dead Space. I am gonna go with Starfield because I think it needs a award to make to make Xbox fanboys not cry. So I'm just gonna go with Starfield because I think it's the only chance they have of winning anything. Sorry, guys. Like, Starfield's not a bad game, but it's not good enough against most of the games this year. Come on, like, be, let's be real. It's it a great the game. In- it's a great game in any other year. If this came out last year, it's right. top three game of the year, probably. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, because remember Elden Ring and God, actually, Elden Ring and God of War. I should be careful when I say that. That might actually not yeah, be Yeah, not last Elden year. Ring. Last year we had Elden Ring and God of War. Against the other games? And actually, no, I think it might have a good shot because it's basically competing with Horizon and um, A Plague Tale because the other ones were Stray and Xenoblade. I, don't th- I think I would put them above those for sure. So it would either be third or fourth, probably. Starfield was a really great 2022 game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, best art direction, Kalen. I think Sea of Stars. I'm really Ooh. torn on this one, honestly, because I think it's either or. I think your choice or mine is the is the correct ones. I'm just going to go on a limb and say Hi-Fi Rush on this one. But, like, if Sea of Stars win, I'll be fucking over the moon for them because they deserve it for what yeah. they did. Like, that's so special what they pulled off with pixel art for this game. Yeah, I'm going with Sea of Stars, too. I am. Best narrative, Chris. Uh, I'm gonna I'm oh, Baldur's Gate because it's just a game that's so freaking narrative. Like, yeah, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. Yeah, that's that's my guess as well. Best game direction. I'm gonna go with Tears of the Kingdom. I think Miyamoto's got to get his his uh, his uh, his peanuts. Oh, I don't know if I want to give this to Baldur's Gate or Tears of the Kingdom, because that's really just the only two that bother me in all of these. Chris, before you make a decision, let me make my argument for Baldur's Gate. Tears of the Kingdom is great. Like, I'm enjoying it far more than I enjoyed Breath of the Wild, but it kind of is just more of the same. Whereas, Mm -hmm. and like, it's, it's great. It's just more of the same. Baldur's Gate is like pretty impressive in what it does, and there's nothing else like that does it. And it's really going to be probably the standard of what RPGing is going to be like. Oh, we know, we know both of them are going to be in this category. When we actually mm-hmm. do this, when we do the game of which one's going to win, I'm going to be torn. I'm going to spend a lot of time oh, yeah. thinking about what I actually think is going to win this. But like, as of right now, I'm just assuming Miyamoto gets an award here. I'm thinking for some reason, Baldur's Gate gets the direction, but Tears of the Kingdom gets game of the year. Like that's the, for that's some gonna, reason. That's interesting conversation, right? Yeah, like, I think that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with my instinct, Baldur's Gate for direction. All right, and that obviously leaves game of the year. So if, Kalen, you put everything on the table, what do you think's winning between, let's be honest, two games? (laughs) Baldur's Gate. Man, it's not even listed here. Baldur's Gate, that's kind of where I'm leaning. It might change. I mean, we'll see based on, like, how I feel as we get closer to it, but like right now, I still think Baldur's Gate's got it. I think it's Tears of the Kingdom for this. Seen That's what game. I'm going with game of the Can year. Can we just take a second just like to talk about what a banger of a year 2023 is? Because like I'm looking through yeah. a list of like all the games that were... Yeah, I sent released. you guys a Polygon like, article with like the list of like really good games. I, I found it even... List, I'm like, God damn, there was a lot. Dude, and I found still an even more exhaustive list. Dude, yeah, I found a more exhaustive list. missing like, off got... that list and there was like a good like solid 30 games plus. We got yeah. Fire Emblem Engage. We got Dead Space. We have Hogwarts Legacy. We have Wild Hearts. We don't talk about Atomic Hearts. That was a dark moment. Um, we have. I Octopath thought about should we, do, should we do our own version of the Razzies? And I went, no, I don't want to give them that much time. <laughs> Wolong Fallen Dynasty. We have Resident Evil 4 ma- Remake. We have uh, Minecraft Legends. 
uh, Dead Island 2, which is supposedly really good. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Um, Tears of the Kingdom. We have a System Shock remake, which we never talked about. Street Fighter 6. Diablo 4. That's the thing. Like Street Fighter 6, I had to struggle to not have in my main six for backups. Because, like, it's going to win the best fighting game, and it's not even fucking close. But, like, man. Well, there's Mortal Kombat. There, mm, let's be honest. It's not even close. Okay. Final Fantasy 16. We have Pikmin 4. We have Armor Core 6. We have Starfield. Mortal Kombat 1. L- Lies of P. Payday 3. Assassin's Creed Mirage, which didn't even get mentioned. Force of Motorsports. Alan Wake 2. Spider-Man 2. Super Mario uh, Wonder. And, like... Modern Warfare 3 is just coming out, which I know yeah, is kind of... Yeah, that's the thing, right? But... Like, you, you look at the awards that we didn't do because we didn't have War... as much in it, like best indie, best ongoing game, best fighting game, family game, sim strategy, sports racing, best multiplayer. Like, indie-wise, like Pizza Tower, you know, is going to be getting an award, yeah. getting a nomination yeah. for best indie. So, like, there is a bunch of stuff that, like, we just can't do because the competition in the main categories is so is so heavy. Now, there's going to be a lot of amazing uh, games this year that get probably one nomination, and that's all they're getting. Like, that's the crazy have, thing. Yeah. Like, Street Fighter VI in any other year would get so many more nominations, but a fighting game compared to everything else that's out there just isn't going to get all these other awards. Now, it may get, like, it could get a best game direction. It could get a best art direction. Like, there could be some of these that get them, but, like, the odds are is you're going to go to more open-world-based games for some of these things, right? So it's it's harder to do. Yeah. But man, like so much this year was just jam packed. And there are some games that deserve better, but it's been such a big year that you're just not going to get that much recognition. And that's a goddamn shame. But as a gamer, it also means that we had a fucking fantastic year. So woe is them, I guess. We're not even done yet because we still have, like, I didn't mention Baldur's Gate, but just putting that in there so no one yells at me in the comments. We have the day before, which is like that survival world MMO. We have Super Mario RPG, which is coming out like in two weeks. We have, and we still have Avatar coming out this year. Yeah, like there's still a couple of yeah. things that are coming on the last like six weeks that could still be interesting things to think about. Like that was the thing with Hi-Fi Rush when it came out so early in the year that I went, God, people are going to fucking forget about this game. Yeah. I'm still waiting for Warhammer 40k Space Marines 2. And I I'm play surprised Dark that... with you guys. Dark Tide is super fucking fun, by the way. Yes, we do. I'm surprised at how many of the games that came out this year I actually played. And my backlog must be so pissed at me. Like, yeah, like my list of finished games I ignored it. is, I want to say in double digits now. Like if I counted everything that I also played and stopped, we'd be at a different point. But like, what am I at for games that came out this year? Five. Yeah, I'm at 12 65. Fin- games that I finished that came out this year. So that's, that's actually yeah. quite a lot considering a lot of the games that I'll usually play are ones that are six to 12 months old because I'm waiting for them to drop in price. I kept a human alive this year. <laughs> Sounds like you didn't beat any games and you're giving excuses. No, no. <laughs> None of that. No, not doing that. All right. Uh, well, is it too late that. to change all of my answers to Sonic Superstars, by the way? Is it too late? Uh, yes, it is too late. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to allow him to do it because that way I have a better chance of winning. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll just go through all the reports and just put Sonic Super, Stuper. Sonic Superstars Stuper. twice. <laughs> I know we said no duplicates, well, but for you, Chris, I'll make an exception. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, bud. All right. Well, uh, awesome topic, Adam. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. We're going to wrap up the show there. If you like what you've heard and you want to hear more, you can always find us wherever you get your podcast. Searching for Pixel Play Podcast. We post every week, you know, if we can, uh, at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Wednesday. So look for us there wherever you get your podcasts or on youtube.com forward slash pixel play podcast. If you want to be part of the show, if you want to submit questions, we are always open to that. You can also join our discord chat with other fellow listeners and ourselves. You can find all that information at link tr dot double E forward slash pixel play podcast. It's a group group there. Um, and yeah, with that, I've been one of your co-hosts, Kalen, a.k.a. Catastrophe, joined as always by Adam at CS Radical and Chris at Jin and Chris. And with that, we'll see you guys next week. Bye for now.